From the High Definition Educational Broadcast Center at Bergen Community College's main campus in Paramus, this is Studio Bergen. Hi everyone, I'm Larry Lavanka, and welcome to this month's episode of Studio Bergen. Normally at this time, you'd see me on that set right over there, talking about the latest news and information coming from the state's largest community college. And then after that's done, you'd see me on that set, right over there, interviewing one of our great faculty, staff, or maybe even a student. But not today. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to take you behind the scenes here at Studio Bergen and show you how we pull off this program every month. You'll meet some of the great people that work on this program, and you'll find out how this show was conceived and maybe what the future holds as well. So I hope you enjoy going behind the scenes today as we take you inside Studio Bergen. It always starts with a script and a concept. What do you want to do with this show? It always was, it's always a script and you always want to ask yourself, who is the audience and what is the message? It always comes down to that. And if you veer from that, you're in a lot of trouble. So as long as you stay on message, it's like what they say to the politicians, stay on message, it's very, very crucial in a television production to stay on message. Um, that's what we try to do, and that, that's, how, that's how you start. You start with the script, you look into the script and say, okay, what shots do I need to support the message in this script? You talk about the student center, what do you need to see? You need to see shots of the student center. You talk about students, you need to see shots of the students. Uh, if you're talking about an individual person, you're going to cut to that person. Well, clearly you need to have the interview of that person. So we need to go out and shoot that material. We need to go out and shoot the interview. We need to go out and shoot what we call B-roll, which is shots of the student center, shots of the campus, shots of um, you know, people on registration, and, and so on and so forth. I had worked on, or I was asked to work on, the, um, the president's show, uh, the former president's show, um, during one of my first few years here. And I, I had not done a ton of TV in the past. I had done some radio back in college, but not a ton of TV. But, you know, I kind of took it on saying that, yeah, I could, I could figure this out. Uh, and then from there, I really didn't want to lose uh, TV. After he left, um, I didn't want to see these great facilities that we have here um, and the work that could be done. I didn't want to see it go away. We had an opportunity to do something uh, somewhat different uh, after that. I was very excited about it because, you know, the problem with being in a studio all the time is that you get, you, you, you and your staff become complacent. You stand behind a camera the whole time, it's a talking head. Um, doing a news magazine format forces us to look outside our normal box. Uh, it allows us to be a little more creative. We have to go out and shoot more outside of the studio and then bring it back and integrate it back into the studio. Uh, anytime you do something like that, it just stretches your creativity a little more. Um, it, it expands your boundaries in, as far as production. Um, and it gives us time to think about how we can, because we go out and see a lot of more programs, uh, that are promoted in the show in this format, it gives us an opportunity to see who else needs video support. Um, and we're able to be a little more proactive and it gives us a chance to get our services known out there too. A lot of people didn't know we had a production facility. I kind of pitched the idea to um, the interim president at the time. And the thought was, why can't we do a news magazine style program that features faculty, staff, and students, um, and news and events that take place here. I mean, there's, there's so many great things that go on here every month. Um, there's plenty of content. It would just be a matter of pulling it off. And, you know, I know there were limitations based on uh, kind of staffing and, and getting a lot of those things figured out, but um, I thought we could do it. So I pitched the idea, and everybody was on board. The whole TV realm here started with a guy working in the library who had some video experience. They gave him, you know, a, a shoestring budget and he figured out how to make it happen and it just built up from there. Made a lot of relations in the community, um, got some help from outside uh, TV sources that, that really built it up and from there it built quite a program academically and uh, for uh, promotional purposes here at the college.
Well, the producer is responsible for the entire show from top to bottom. That person uh, um, has ultimate authority of how the show is going to go, is responsible. So that producer has what we call the final cut. Um, whatever they say goes, for good or bad or indifferent. Um, the director just does what the producer tells them to do, but also the producer and director work very closely together. It's, um, you can't work in a vacuum. You must work together as a team. The producer is kind of like the orchestra leader, and the director is kind of the first violinist, which really, the first violinist is really the orchestra leader. Um, but they always take their cues from the producer. And that, that, that first violinist or that director makes sure that everybody's rehearsed, has the people um, set up where they need to be set up at the right time. But television is a collaborative, a collaborative venture, uh, you know, from, 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 the, from the editor, and the editor is, is crucial. And a lot of times an editor will take the role of a producer, uh, kind of a the producer's, a, a, a good editor will be able to see what the producer doesn't see. And many producers are too busy. They have a million things going on. Maybe they're producing two or three or four shows at the same time. They come in with a sheet. I have a shot sheet here. I need this, I need this, I need this. Sometimes they hand it to the editor and say, please put this together because I have to go produce another show. So an editor is really crucial. Well, originally I started here as a student. Um, I was in media club with Howard and he had said to me, you know, Brian's looking for someone to do some video work. You know, do you know anybody you're interested? So I said, okay. So I, you know, I went up and talked to Brian. This was the first time I met him. This was a long time, you know, feels like old times now. And I went up there and, and talked to him. I showed him some stuff I've done. And he's like, okay, you know, you got a job. So that was pretty much the beginning of the end, as we saw it. So I got on here and started editing stuff for the college, for various events and stuff, and for the Files channel. And here I am. Back in the old days, there were three guys on staff, and we did multi cameras, and one. We'd have one guy out here doing different cameras and one guy directing and running the control room. We have the luxury of, uh, when we, we had the luxury of designing this facility to be able to accommodate a large crew production or a very small crew production. Everything is handy. Um, so it's not easy moving staff around because TV isn't all we do. Um, we do a lot of events outside of here. We do all the classroom support. So when we have the luxury of a crew, it's great, but if we have to uh, use very short staff. Um, we know how to do it. These guys have been, I've been doing it for a long time and my staff have been doing it for a long time. I'm not the only pro here. These guys uh, are a real good support system here. Between the shoots, you know, sometimes I got to shift my schedule a little early. You know, I usually work the night shift, so it's like one to nine. Um, days I'll come in and I'll be here at eight, you know. I'll be here at seven sometimes just prepping the studio, stuff like that. When I'm not doing that, um, we take care of the night events, so we'll have like live music, stuff like that. Um, some of the debates, we'll do those at night. Um, there's all sorts of outside groups over in the, the tech center, the meeting and training room over there. We have to handle audio reinforcement for that. Um, just make sure everything goes smooth over there. Sometimes it's bigger, sometimes it's panel discussions, sometimes it's just a guy with a podium. Um, we do, you know, like I said, live music out in the student center. There'll be, we've worked with the theater. You know, we do things in the theater a lot, so we work closely with those guys. Um, there's also classroom support, just general, you know, putting out fires, basically. You know, it's like we get the call, hey, we have a problem. Okay, we go up there, we fix it, and then, you know, if we can't fix it immediately, well, we get to it as soon as we possibly can, which is usually in a day or so. Uh, there's a lot. It's always, always going, always busy. It's a wonderful project, especially if it's something that, I can do with the student. I mean, some of the B-roll that you might actually see behind me, I was able to do with one of our um, student workers. So it's not, it's not only me contributing to the shows that we do every month, it's also me being able to say, hey, you know, why don't we go around, we look at the campus and see what shots you may want. You know, if you have an idea of what you want this shot to look like, let's make it happen. Let's, let's do this and let's see if it works and if it doesn't then we'll do something else. And it's, it's a constant learning environment. So it's, it's actually pretty good. Logistics are always a little difficult. Um, you know, running from shoot to shoot and, and setting a shot list every month and making sure that we can get all of these things, uh, you know, taped. Um, it's not always easy. You know, uh, I kind of run back and forth uh, to different shoots and different events that 
you know, really as a PR person, we should be covering anyway. You know, if, if it's a, a, a Pulitzer Prize winning speaker, well, we're probably going to do some, you know, promotion or press on it, um, taking photos and things. So it's really not a huge deal to go down there and also shoot video. Obviously, the, the onus or the, uh, the difficulty comes in um, trying to, to lay that on the, on the production staff and the guys and girls that are going to hold the camera. So um, for them, that's always a little difficult, I'd imagine. But, you know, they've come through in spades uh, every time. And, and they've been just so wonderful. Um, they make this show happen every month. Um, I suppose I wear a lot of hats too, uh, writing it and producing it and directing it and sitting in the editing room. But um, you know, I can't do any of that if uh, if nobody's behind the camera. So um, you know, I, I, I put my trust into this group, and they've they've always done uh, just such a great job. You know, every month we spend maybe two days in editing on the show, and then from my point directly, because usually it's about a day of logging, capturing, and audio, and stuff, and then a day of really, you know, getting all the, the final edit done, and cutting everything, and getting the final DVDs made, and printed, and all that. And then there's also, you know, a few hours here and there as we shoot B-roll for the show, on and off, depending on what events are going on on campus. Well, we get it done because we love to do it. Uh, we love TV. We have a half a dozen television producers that work here that also double as technicians for the smart classrooms, for Tech 128. So we wear a lot of hats. But one of the things that really keeps us going is our enthusiasm for TV. No one gets to see me on TV or the, and they see my name, like you say, in the credits. But that's kind of the way I like it. I'm not really a guy to be on TV. I like to be behind the scenes and get things done. And really, editing is the glue that puts everything together. It takes all of the, all the shots we've got, all these different tapes, the different takes from the studio for, for the narration and everything, and puts everything together into what people actually get to see. So really, despite not being seen, if they didn't, if there wasn't editing, there wouldn't be any show. They'd just be watching, you know, home movies of various things. So it's really important to get, you know, it's kind of an important position to be in to get the editing done here. And it's also a great position to work with some of the people like Larry to get everything straightened up and you know really have a come into the show with a plan and put the show together show one was definitely different show one was definitely the concept was there um, you know what you see now uh, kind of the news and events and faculty things and whatnot but uh, the concept was definitely uh, there, but the look and feel was vastly different. We had these, uh, this backdrop back here over my shoulder, and we had these red lights and blue lights that came out, and uh, it didn't quite work. I I'd say that I was definitely a little stiffer. Uh, I think I've got more comfortable over these last three years. Uh, I've, you know, kind of developed more as a TV personality, I guess. Considering I didn't have any TV training as far as uh, being a TV personality is concerned, you know, I guess I'm doing okay. I, I let you guys be the judge of that. But um, I, I think from show one, we've definitely grown. We, we've definitely gotten better about um, how we produce our packages and, and how we kind of go through the process of, of editing and, um, you know, trying to get this show streamlined a little bit more, too, uh, for our own sake, you know, to make it easier on ourselves. But um, again, and, and the concept was there. Uh, but you know there was some fine tuning that definitely needed to go on. What's not different about it is the you know what what it does for the community. Um, you know it, it's it it's the same show in that it you know it really promotes the college and what goes around around the college. It serves the same purpose, has the same look, has the same uh, feel and atmosphere when you watch the show. But what's different is the the overall general look. We've just given it a little more pizzazz, and we hope to keep jazzing it up a little more as we move along, as we, as we progress. The more we see what we can change, um, I'm not afraid of change. Nobody on this staff is. And if you're in the television business and you're afraid of change, you don't belong here. Because we like to make things move. We like to make things go um, and make it appealing for a vast majority of different people. It started out quality and it's getting better and better every year. I'm thrilled and I'm very proud to be part of it. It's very informative. Lets people know what's going on. There's there's a lot going on here. There's always always something, you know. 
So it's a good spotlight on things. You know, you can just kind of pick and choose. Like, okay, this is going on this month, this is going on that month, this, here it is, you know. I think the biggest evolution in this show since we've started it has just been the overall production quality. Is that since the beginning we've kind of had the content, we've kind of had the writing's been pretty good and all that kind of stuff. But I think really what, what I feel like I've improved is the production quality. Because every time we look at the show and there's always some other you know, thing we can improve on, whether it's white balance, you know, color correction, we've got audio problems, all these little things that you, know, you send someone out with a camera and they get video, but there's so many things that they may have not be perfect. And you know, to have been working on either getting this stuff better when it's been shot or working on actually correcting it in post. But either way, just overall bringing up the, the quality of what the show is. You were the last to be born in a family of seven brothers. That's why you had to sleep on the seventh bunk bed and you developed vertigo. And that's why you couldn't become a pilot and you had to study engineering. You patented 367 inventions, but only three made it to market. The clap clap candle, the lazy runners, and the frit and go. That's why you don't have an apartment on the 16th floor and you have it on the fifth. But that's where you met Carmen. After 237 dates, you finally proposed. With her, you had three children. The fourth ended up being a dog. It's not the same, but he adores you. Numbers change your life. That's why you should take control of your credit score by keeping your credit card balances low. For more tips, visit numberschangeyourlife.org. This is one amazing truffle tree. Can you imagine a place where these grow everywhere? Yes, it's called the forest. A magical place to enjoy with your family. Ooh. So discover the forest and explore all the wonder that's there. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. True definition of hero. You've been a hero. It took a heroic effort. Every day we bring to our fans the world of sports. We speak of heroes and heroism. But there are days when sports matter little and heroes matter more. These heroes don't hit walk-off homers or buzzer-beating threes. They simply made a plan for what to do when disaster strikes. You never know when you might need to be the hero because you never know if today is the day before a natural disaster. Prepare, plan, be a hero. Visit ready.gov. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. It's always a challenge. It's a challenge trying to juggle staff. Uh, right now, we only had two people in the control room. For today's shoot, we, did, we had two people in the control room. Normally, you'd have four. Uh, we only use one camera person. Normally, you'd have three. So it is a challenge. It, re it really is. There's always challenges, you know, it's, it, nothing is ever perfect. Um, you know, I'm hard on myself about, you know, how I look or how I sound or, um, you know, I even get feedback from my mom about that. Well, she said, you know, she'll say, you did a great job this month, but maybe next month you should try this. So, you know, you're always trying to improve. Um, you know, things have gone wrong. It happens. Uh, we had a, an instance where when I was doing the, the news uh, end of things, um, we didn't have my mic on. So what happened is we had a, a picture of my face, but, but no mic, so we had to redo it. Now, of course, that means I have to look pretty similar to how I looked when I was over on the interview set. So I had to wear the same shirt, and I had to wear the same tie, but you know, 
we've done about 20 episodes of this program, and that was probably the thing that we did wrong, or at least the thing that was the biggest um, mistake or, or problem. And in the grand scheme of things, that's not really much of a, an issue. Um, never once in an interview has somebody freaked out or, or gotten nervous and, and said, you know what, I have to walk off this set. It's never happened. Uh, you know, I've never passed out while we're doing something or, or something like that. So, um, you know, we've gotten pretty lucky in that regard. But I think that comes down to the preparation and the way that we work and the way that we set things up. Uh, we, we run a pretty tight ship here. So we, when we get into this studio, we know what's expected and we, we make it happen. The biggest challenge for us in this field and working with, you know, for this show is just limited time and, and resources here. And at least we've been lucky enough to have a lot of really nice equipment come in uh, over the past couple of years. But we're always limited by human resources here and what we can do because of who we have to do it. So it's been a push to get the show done, but I'm really happy that we're doing this. It's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of work to commit every month, but, you know, for us, for, a lot, for you, for Larry, you know, it's just been a lot of work, but it always comes out good at the end of the month, and it's a great show. It's probably the best show we have on the channel now going, so it's really a good, you know, thing for us because it shows what we can really do. I got into this business 25 years ago, and I got into this business because it was fun. Um, I got into the business, my cousin is actually a senior engineer at NBC, and he always told me, if you're not having fun in this business, don't get into this business. It has been a tight, tightly uh, produced program, a very well-produced program, top to bottom, from scripting to staffing to the technological aspect of it. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we don't allow anything to come out of our hands that isn't top quality. You know, working on this show is kind of a rewarding experience because I get to see, you know, everyone's work come together. I'm kind of at the point where I get to see the fruits of everyone's labor. You know, all the people that went out and did camera work, the stuff that I shot, all of Larry's work in writing and, and, and hosting the studio segments. And then I get to see it at the point where everything's coming together and becoming the full show. So it's kind of cool to be there for that point of the show and get everybody together and to see how it's really going to you know, play out for that month, and then we sit back and watch it before, you know, look for any problems before we send it out. And it's truly a good experience to see this all come together. And it's really rewarding when you get to see it finally, and you put the DVDs out and you get to see it, it's on the air, it goes out in the emails to everyone. So all the work, that, all the stuff that I've done is getting seen by a lot of people around here in the community. You know, my hope for Studio Bergen uh, and my hope here at the college is that, you know, I'm here for another, I don't know, 30 years, 40 years, I don't know, you know, I'm a pretty young guy. Um, I'd like to see some iteration of Studio Bergen uh, live on. Uh, you know, as long as I'm here and as long as there's motivation and um, kind of commitment and, and approval uh, by the, the rest of the college community, um, you know, I'll keep this going as long as I can. Um, you know, we don't need a huge staff to pull this off. Of course, it would be appreciated if we had a few more people to help, but we can make this work. You know, we're really tight. We're really efficient. And uh, I'm committed to, to making this work for as long as I can. I think that we would all like to see students get involved in the production of Studio Bergen and any other shows that we might have here, um, only because we want to make sure that, you know, our program gets you know get a lot of views from from the students I mean they learn a lot in here and I think that it would make it exciting for them to see and um, to come in and see a production and say hey this is what I could be doing in the future this could be something that I could be doing at an actual job that I get paid for and I get the experience right here at Bergen Community College I'd like to see more uh, we did a couple of shows this you know last year and this year we did a live show uh, on, on the scene at graduation, we did a live show by the Student Center. Um, I'd like to see more live stuff. I'd like to see more uh, complex elements in the live stuff. Um, you know, I would like to see, 
It would be nice sometime when there's another big debate going on and we could do a live Studio Bergen right before the debate and talk about the issues that are going on in the county, you know, and give everybody a fair shake and not, uh, you know, de de depending on how the debate goes, let everybody get a shot at, you know, a window to what's going on. Um, I, I, I'd like to see a lot more live stuff, uh, and I think the audience would love to see more live stuff also. Possibly a call-in sometime would be nice too. For right now, the future looks like it's going to be hopefully a gradual slope up like we've been doing. Just keep improving, keep trying to do more with what we've got, try to improve the production quality as much as we can, and try to improve you know, on the, on the output side of how people are seeing it. And I'm hoping in the near future that we're going to try to bring this show up to full HD signal path through the whole thing. Right now, most of our shoots are in HD. And we've just got the studio upgraded to eight full HD signal path and record. So the, the basis is there. And so I'm hopefully going to be bringing everything. I'm going to redo all the graphics and get everything and pull everything up to a HD quality. And then hopefully we can start, maybe next season, we'll start doing the shows in full HD. And we'll be able to do them onto the internet then on YouTube and such in full HD, which would be really nice for everyone to see. Um, the channel will probably remain standard def for right now because of the restrictions from Verizon. Uh, but web distribution is kind of a huge part of the show right now. So I think bringing up everything to HD will be a nice visual improvement for everyone. You can see we're always trying to make improvements. The set uh, obviously is different than it's been in years past. Um, you know, I, I really want to integrate students a lot more. I want to get students involved in this project. So far, um, they, they've been somewhat apprehensive, but you know, as we begin to work more and more with the faculty and work more and more with um, kind of creating a farm system or pipeline uh, of future television and, and video professionals, uh, hopefully we can integrate them more uh, into this show because you know what, I'd love to be able to say when I'm sitting on the desk, uh, I'd love to be able to say, okay, and now for the sports report, we're going to go over to you know, the next Warner Wolf that's coming up. Um, I, I'd love to do that. I'd, I'd love to see students integrated that way. Um, to take a little bit of heat off of me, I'd love to see students even produce their own packages. Uh, that would make things very easy. If, if a student came to me and said, hey, look, I've got a four-minute piece on whatever it is, uh, that's great. I can just drop that into the show, and I, I don't need to worry about that. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, my coworkers are excellent. Um, you know, everybody that comes through that door, is just, it's always a joy to work with, you know, whether they're, sometimes, you know, you get the shows where it's you really pulling teeth trying to get things, um, but there's other times where it's, it, it's fun, it rolls, you know, and you're always meeting people, you know, there's always, always somebody, you know, who's just interesting, you know, it's, it's, you'd be surprised, you get some people that you thought you knew what they did or who they were, and then, you know, they sit down and then they come out with something, you're like, oh, wow, I didn't know that, that's, that's weird, that's cool, good. Not only is, is it very informative, you know, it, it really helps the community, not just Bergen Community College, but the actual community outside of here to really see what we do here, you know, what the students are up to, what the college is up to, and what we can contribute for them. And, and um, yeah, it's just an all around quality show. Knowing what I know about the past and, and the present, I, the, this kind of show can run for as long as the college wants to exist here. You know, I, you know, there's always a program to be highlighted. There's always an interesting faculty member. And the ones that we've done, there's always interest in going back to them because they're doing something else different. They don't just teach their math classes, as you've seen. Uh, they do other things that really affect their students, their, the education here. Um, it affects the community. I, I don't see this show getting old. I don't see it getting boring. Um, it's different, it's different uh, content every week, and we're doing our best to change it up to, you know, make it look relevant to what's going on in the college community. We enjoy what we do. We'd like to do more TV. Um, that's about really all I can say.